If we've not met, my name's Eric. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today. Thank you so much for choosing to come out and worship with us. To those of you who are online, God bless you guys as well. Thank you for, um, for worshiping with us from wherever you find yourself today. Let's go ahead and pray and then get into God's word. Father, we thank you and praise you. We give you glory today. What an honor it was to come into the house of God and worship with fellow believers this morning. We just give you all the praise due your name. And as we dive into your word, we pray that you would use it to illuminate our hearts and minds. Not just that we might be educated today, Lord, but that you might do life transformation in this place this morning. That people's lives would be changed for having been here in your presence. That your word is alive and well and still transforms today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. It feels a little hot to me, the mic. How about you guys? I don't know about you guys. All right, so we've been in this series that's called Feelings. I'm not going to sing Feelings. Adam can sing. I can't sing. Adam will sing and do all the singing. But last week, he did an amazing job kicking it off talking about fear, worry, and anxiety. Has anybody ever had fear, worry, or anxiety, or is it only me? Just a few of y'all? Okay. We're in the right place today. We're talking about the right subject those are the, the subject of feelings is a very important topic, um, and feelings can very easily be manipulated, can they not? I mean, I think of even marketers. How much have marketers manipulated our feelings over the years, convincing us that we might get the next iPhone when all they do is upgrade the camera, and I don't even take pictures on my iPhone, right? But I got to have it. It's going to be better than the last one or uh, the next new dress or the next new trend, whatever that might be. So feelings can be something that is a little bit easily manipulated. And let me tell you something, the devil, the enemy of our souls really likes to use feelings to get under our skin and steer us at times in the wrong direction. So we need to have a firm grasp, as I shared in a previous message, we need to understand understand who we are, and more importantly, we need to understand whose we are because it influences who we are. These are identity issues when you really get down to it, right? So it's important to understand how God made us, right? It's important to know who we are as human beings, and that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. I want to take a step back from feelings for a second and talk about the triune nature of who we are as human beings. God created us with a spirit, soul, and body. And one of my favorite verses on this particular topic is 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. Christ. He who calls you is faithful who also will do it. Now there's a lot in that set of verses and I share some verses over and over again. I think it's as much for me as for anybody else because I need to hear them. I need to be reminded of things like this, especially when things are difficult, especially when my feelings aren't in check or when things are going wrong in my body. It gives me great comfort to know that the Prince of Peace himself is praying and has the same desire that I do that my spirit, soul, and body would be whole, right? How many of you want peace in your life, right? We all want that sense of peace. The Prince of Peace himself is praying for you. I need to remind myself of that often. There's another little nuance in there. It says he who is faithful will also do it. You know, there's things that my willpower cannot overcome. I'm not strong enough in and of myself. And what this verse tells me is that he will do for us at times the things that we cannot do for ourselves. There's a beautiful comfort in that, and we'll circle back to that a little bit later on in today's message. So I do want to take one step back from where we started last week and just make sure we understand some foundational truths about how God shaped us because they're so interconnected. If you look at spirit, soul, and body, when one area is in disorder, guess what? It affects every other area of our lives. Have you ever noticed that? You know, think about it. You could be walking around in perfect health, and I think we take this for granted sometimes, right? When you're walking around in perfect health, you don't think of your health all that much. 
And then guess what? If you get like a little teeny splinter underneath your nail that particular day, all of a sudden it's like the worst thing in the world, right? That one little thing can set everything else into disorder. Or you get that headache or something like that and you're like, will this ever go away? All of life is so interconnected and man, we can depend on our king and our creator to give us peace in the midst of even the most difficult of circumstances. Now, I do want to jump in from the very beginning when we start to talk about some of these subjects and say that, you know, we live in a fallen world, do we not? And sin can cause some of these disorders and dis-ease that I'm talking about. So almost right from the jump here, I want to tell you today that if you're in this place and you're struggling in some form of habitual sin, use that verse as a bit of hope, but also take action, as we'll talk about a little later in today's message. You know what you got to do first and foremost? You got to repent. God, help me. God, would you forgive me? Lord, would you do for me what I've been unable to do for myself? I don't want to go on living in that lifestyle. I don't want to go on trapped in that sin, but I can't seem to overcome it in my own power. God, would you help me? There's no more precious prayer than can be prayed today than that. Can I get an amen? So when you think about different areas of life and the interconnectedness of it, Think about physical challenges in your body like I talked about a little bit earlier. If you've ever had an ongoing physical challenge for a sustained period of time, guess what? You might become depressed. It may cause your mind, your will, and your emotions, which is the soul. It may cause disorder in that area of your life from one other area. Also, a big one today that I would have added to Adam's fear and anxiety message last week is stress. How many of you are running around in stress right now? Are you willing to raise your hand at that one? A lot of them all around the room, right? We live in this constant state of stress. Let me tell you, if your mind, your will, or your emotions are out of order, it can cause problems in your physical body, i.e. literally it could cause you to have a heart attack over time. So it's important that we think about these things and ask God to help us to get our houses in order. Moms, taking care of your husbands who act like children can be totally exhausting, can it not? Did I actually say that? I meant to say raising your children can at times be totally exhausting, right? Men, we need to grow up. Ladies, give it up for the moms just one more time in here. We love you guys. We actually love you guys. So here's something that's important to note. We're primarily spirit beings that have a soul and live in a body. Do you get that? We're primarily spirit beings that have a soul and live in a body. But if we're honest with ourselves, at times we kind of flip that around. We let our emotions drive us or we let our our physical bodies drive us and dictate who we should be when the Bible actually says we should bring those things into submission to the Lord. So when we're letting the Spirit lead our lives, everything else falls into proper order. It doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect and pain-free, right? We live in a sinful, fallen world, as I said earlier, but he could help you through those difficult things that you're going through because the order in life is right, but when you allow the emotions to rule you or you allow your body to rule you, everything I assure you will be in disorder. So I want to share with you a couple of the things I've learned over the past few months as my mortality was put in check, right? I gained some new understanding and some new wisdom over the past few months because prior to that, I think like most of us, we take some things for granted. When you're in good health, you just go about life as, guess what, it doesn't seem like your mortality will ever be questioned, right? So you live like it's something in the future, and the Bible actually cautions against that. He says, don't be like that man who says, I'm a rich man, I'm going to store up grain, everything's going to be great for the future, and then guess what, this very day, your life may be called into question, right? So I'm trying to live a new way with that understanding, understanding that life is but a vapor, right? For some reason, I would hear verses like that, but they'd be, ah, that's for somebody else, that's not for me. No, I want to live every day to the fullest. I want to be as healthy as I can for as long as I can until the Lord comes back or until he takes me to be home with him, right? 
Because if I could begin to live that way, if I could have a proper order to life, then guess what? I could be a maximum usefulness to my God and King for as long as he will allow me. Can I get an amen? I don't know about you, but how would you like to live like perfectly healthy up until the time to go home to be with him, right? And I'm talking about spirit, soul, body, all those areas that he talked about. He, he said in his word that his desire and his prayer for us is that we would be whole in spirit, soul, and body. So I'm asking him to help me do that. Can I get an amen? amen. So my prayer for you is that you don't need a life-changing event like I had in order to begin that change. You know, I had the, the blessing and honor of speaking to a family whose son was struggling with addiction, their adult son, on Thursday night after the prayer service. And I shared with them, you know, in addiction circles, we often talk about this elevator. And we all like to go to the top. We like to live up here where everything's good and everything's wonderful and everything's fine. And the bottom of the stairwell or the bottom of that elevator is the place where you hit your rock bottom. But guess what? You don't have to go all the way to the bottom. You could get off on any floor that you would like. So one of the prayers that I have for you today is that if some of the areas that I speak to you about today, you see are going in the wrong direction, that today God might give you the strength to step out in that particular area and begin to make some changes before you reach the place that I had to get to make the changes happen in my life. Because my changes in the area particularly of the body that leads to some influence on my mind, my will, and my emotions came out of a crisis. But guess what? Take my crisis as yours and learn from it. Amen? In fact, somebody came up to me after first service, and he said, Eric, I want to thank you for something. When you preached, maybe back in early January, um, he, he said that I, I had shared a little bit of my story. I think that was one of the first times that I had come back after preaching, you know, being out for, for being sick. And uh, he said, my words resonated with him, and I said, hey, you got to check yourself out. You got to keep yourself um, in, in health. And he, he ended up feeling like a pain in his chest, and then he said, like normally, he would have never gone to the doctor, but he said, God put my words in his mind for a moment. He went to the school nurse where he worked and she said, you got to go to the hospital now and ended up having to get a triple bypass that day, right? So God is good. He'll use your stories and your testimonies to make a difference in the lives of others. If we'll only share them, man, share what God's doing and grow and allow God to do the work that only he could do in your life. See, what I'm talking about is vitally important. What if that guy wasn't a believer? You know what? Heaven and hell lie in the balance. What if we don't share our stories and don't share our faith, and then those we love actually have that judgment day moment, so to speak, right? Man, we have this privilege, this opportunity as believers to share the good news of the gospel. The Bible puts it this way in 1 Thessalonians 2.8. So we cared for you. We love those around us a whole bunch. We loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. We want to be in hell so we could share our lives with others. Can I get an amen, right? Love God, love others in Jesus' name. So a few months ago, I talked about Alcoholics Anonymous in step four. If you weren't here for that message, what that means in, in, in recovery circles is that you do a fearless and searching moral inventory of yourself. You look at the various areas of your life as a believer, say, and you say, spirit, soul, body. Okay, what areas of my life are in order? What areas of my life might not be order? What do I need to repent for? Where do I maybe need to change? Are there people that I need to apologize to because my bad behavior has affected them in a negative way? And that's not the most pleasant thing to do. Can I get an amen? To examine yourself rightly in light of God's word, right? But it was a process I knew I had to undertake. And we all have these lists of maybe how we want to live our life. God's going to be first for every believer, right? God's got to be at the top. God, you are at the top. And then maybe at other seasons of our life, different things are in different places in there. But when I began to look, I want to give you what God spoke to me, what should be the right order in my life, and then maybe share some areas where it was not in order. So God started saying, obviously, he's got to be first and foremost in my life, right? Then for me, my health, 
my spirit, my soul, my body, I need to focus on that a lot right now because the next relationship of most importance is that of my wife, right? But if I am not in good spiritual condition, if I'm not in good physical condition, if my mind, my will, and my emotions are running amok, how well do you think my relationship with my wife is going to be? So you can't elevate your relationship with your spouse or with your kids above your relationship with God, but you also have to take care of your health. Can I get an amen? I'm talking not just about physical health, spirit, soul, and body. It has to be high up on the list. So under Mary Jo's family, guys, sorry, mom gets first place. Give it up for all the moms one last time today. Mom gets first place. Then ministry, then work, then hobbies and things of that nature. So I think as believers, we all said we want God first and foremost at the top of the list, right? But let me ask you a couple questions real quick. If I looked at your schedule, would it really say that God's first and foremost in your life? Some people might be shaking their heads no right now. So if I looked at your checkbook, would it say that God is first and foremost in your life? If I looked at the time you spent with God, trying to be in his presence on a regular basis, would it say that he is first and foremost in your life? I'm going to ask you a couple questions that are hard in all the areas of life, spirit, soul, and body today, and if any of them resonate with you, at the end, I want to pray with you about that. So here's a statement I want to get out there a little bit early in this message. Willingness without action is fantasy. Some of you need to write that down. Say, yeah, me. Willingness without action is fantasy. So if you say, Lord, I'm willing, you are first in my life, but there's no actions to line up with it, you're just dreaming. You're not speaking the truth. Not just in the area of your relationship with God, but take it to other areas. Lord, I am going to get fit, I am going to lose weight, but then you go get a Big Mac immediately following this service. (laughs) You're just dreaming, right? Our actions need to line up with our words, you know. It's not enough to be willing. When it came to nutrition stuff, when it came to physical fitness stuff, guess what? I knew what to do. Did I do it? No, right? We need to put our actions behind our words and what we say we believe, we actually need to live them out. The Bible tells us this when we think of the proper order of life. Luke 10, 27, another verse that I say all the time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. So we all know he should be first and foremost the most important relationship in our life. But are we doing something about that? Because if we really love him, we'd want to spend time with him. If we really loved him, we would worship him. We would spend time in his presence. We would read his word. We would spend time with others, growing in our relationship with him. Amen? So important to prioritize that relationship. When we do, everything else in life has a way of falling into place. My mind, my will, my emotions line up under submission to my spirit, and that's the way that God intended it to be. But guess what? You have to feed your spirit. You have to give it proper nutrition. If you're feeding your your spirit with the junk food of Facebook and Instagram and modern day television and mainstream media, you're going to be in distress all the time. We need to feed it with the right things. We need to pray. We need to worship. We need to study God's word. For me, it also meant serving throughout my life. That was something big that actually helped me connect with others and connect with God at a deeper level. Your list may be different than my list, right? Right? But I encourage you to seek God out and say, Lord, where do I feel most connected to you? How can I stay in that place of your presence and be there that it would guide the other areas of my life? There's a very interesting verse found in James 2.26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. 
Again, he's making this connection, as with a few other verses, that uh, we are spirit, soul, and body beings, right? And he's saying that, guess what? Your actions, your works, will demonstrate what's going on in your heart. I'm not saying your works will save you, but if you've been saved and God's the priority in your life, then the works will begin to reflect that in other areas of your life, right? What you do in secret, as we read in Matthew chapter 6 last week, will be revealed in the other areas of your life. Where you're putting in the work, guess what? It'll show what's really important to you. Exercise for our souls. 1 Timothy 4.8, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has a value for all things, holding the promise for both the present life and the life to come. Guess what? You need to work out spiritually. It's not enough to simply show up in church on Sunday. I assure you, you will be malnourished and you will be miserable as it pertains to the spiritual things of life. If we're not, how many of you get hungry? You seen those commercials where they like turn into this demon-like person for not eating a Snickers? They were doing those back in the day, right? You get hangry. I'm telling you, your spirit is hangry if you're not spending the appropriate time with God, right? We need to prioritize that spiritual fitness in our life. In fact, if I use another recovery analogy, which I think applies to more than just addiction of alcohol and drugs, um, they say your sobriety is contingent on your spiritual condition. Your sanity is contingent on your spiritual condition. Your mind, your will, and your emotions are contingent on your spiritual condition, right? If you elevate those other things above your spiritual condition, we, you will get yourself in trouble as I did as well, right? I've got another verse here from 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Thus I run, or therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. I have a goal in mind. Thus I fight not as one who beats against the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into submission, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. It's kind of crazy. When we get life out of order, there's some of you in this room, man, you are fit. You're looking jacked. You're looking really good. That is a good thing. We should take care of our bodies is what it said. We should work out, eat right, do the right thing in the natural. That is a very important thing. But he's saying here, it's even more important to pay similar attention to what's going on with our spiritual life because that'll benefit you not only here, but in the life to come, right? Guess what? At the same time, you're all in the race whether you want to be or not. We're all in a spiritual war whether we want to be or not. So we better be fit in spirit, soul, and body or the enemy certainly will try to take us out. Ephesians 5.29 For no one hates his own body but feeds it and cares for it. Now, I read this verse, and it it called some question and some repentance into my life. It was strange. Mary Jo told me not to overthink it or overdo it, but it says if you don't hate your body, if you read it the other way, then guess what? You're going to feed it right, and you're going to care for it. If you you love your spiritual relationship with God, you're going to feed it, you're going to care for it, right? But what does it say in reverse, though? If I'm okay eating junk food all the time, if I'm okay taking in spiritual junk food all the time, what does it say about my present condition, about how I feel about myself and how I feel about my relationship with God, how I feel about my relationship with others, especially for me and just coming off of the heart surgery, okay, if I'm out there and I want to eat like two pints of Haagen-Dazs ice cream and I do it and I think that's okay, it's like a certain death sentence, right? Right? What does that say? I'm having to process these kinds of thoughts. And yes, I did eat a pint of ice cream. It was a bad day, right, so to speak. It really tasted good, though, at the same time. But I need to process that. Like, I know, like, okay, I know that's a death sentence. I can't be eating that stuff, right? Do you hear what I'm saying? 
So I'm trying to think about some things in different ways. And man, that verse really just stung me. Like what, when I'm eating that kind of stuff, what is it actually doing to me? What does it say about me? If I'm comfortable eating junk, if I don't work out, if I don't take care of myself, guess what? There's some guarantees that I know in life that I've already experienced, and I can guarantee that you'll experience as well. If you don't take care of yourself, if you eat wrong, you will have inflammation. You will have pain. You will have bodily disorder in your life. You will not feel good. You will have to live off of all these super caffeinated crazy drinks because you're tired all the time. And guess what? The older you get, the worse it gets if you don't take care of yourself. This is an absolute 100% guarantee. And I see a few of you shaking your head, right? There's truth in it. So let me share a few more things that I've learned over the past few months as I've dived into some of these subjects. And again, I'm sharing these with you because they're also interrelated and we'll bring it back to our mind, our will and our emotions before we go. Um, So what makes up, I talked about spirit for a second, what makes up body? Like how do you take care of your body? It has to do with a few things, nutrition, right? Exercise, sleep, and even going to the doctor. So how many of you know that if you want to be physically fit, guess what? You got to eat right and you got to work out, right? We all know this, right? Willingness without action is fantasy. Willingness without action is fantasy. Nutrition, the standard American diet, if you're about my age, 45, 50 years or so, in the 70s, they introduced this thing called the food pyramid. And in this food pyramid, they had like grains here, and then you eat this here, and then you eat meat here. Guess what? If you eat that diet, it will kill you. Thank you, United States government. We have such trust in you and your ability to tell us what to eat and what to write. We absolutely love you guys. There's 50 years of evidence to prove this out, right? So since the introduction of that and getting people to eat in that particular manner, high blood pressure, more people are on blood pressure medication than ever before. People are heavier than they ever had before. Heart disease is higher than it's ever been before. More people die from heart disease every year than by COVID combined, so to speak, right? So these are things that they they don't tell you, but they continue to push for whatever strange reason. I don't quite get it, and I'm not going to make any political judgments on what we're talking about here. I'm just telling you the reality is true. If you eat that way, guess what? It it will ultimately cause inflammation and all these other bad things that I was telling you about. Um, Exercise. Lack of exercise is a challenge. If you do something as simple as walking three times a week, right, it can add years to your life. Literally years to your life and your overall health. So you don't have to go out there and be like Adrian and do CrossFit every day. I mean, like, how many of you say, boo, I ain't doing that stuff. Something wrong with those people, right? You don't have to go so far as that if you just get out there and walk. Amen. If you could sleep and get a healthy sleep pattern, you know how you start to get a healthy sleep pattern? Ditch all those energy drinks first and foremost, right? You got to get off of some of that. It'll give you a heart attack in and of itself. You know, Mary Jo has had a sleeping challenge for the majority of her life. Uh, like yesterday, it was a beautiful thing. Um, she slept till like 10 o'clock and she wakes up. She, I really feel guilty because I slept till 10 o'clock. I'm like, hallelujah, Jesus, the woman never sleeps. Thank you, Lord, for giving her some sweet rest for a day. And man, she handles it like a champ, you know, like, but for most people, if you don't sleep, guess what? It's going to cause you some problems, right? Guys in particular, the next one's for you guys, you got to go to the doctor before there's a problem. So first service, Peggy was here. She works at Bold City Health and uh, Dr. Aaron over there. There's many other great doctors like them in the region. Um, But recently, one of the things that we did out of crisis was that we went and got some blood tests done that revealed a bunch of different things in our life. And and going back and forth with Dr. Aaron, um, it immediately became apparent that the major focus of it all had to do with stuff surrounding the heart. And I said, what would have happened if I would have taken this blood test 10 years ago when I was feeling okay? She said, the markers probably would have been identical, but now you've had 10 years of living and eating and doing the wrong thing. If you would have came 10 years ago while you felt good, you probably wouldn't have to have gone through what you did. So I was the kind of guy where I avoided the doctor at all costs. Any other guys back me up at the moment? But we're all bad. We need to go to the doctor, right? So I had never really been to the doctor. I mean, I never had stitches. I never, um, you know, had a broken bone. So I went to the hospital and just overachieved. You know, I went in there and they had to cut my heart and all that stuff. I mean, it was 
you know, so don't be dumb like I was is what I'm trying to tell you. All this is important because if my body is out of disorder, it's very hard for me to be into the spiritual things. When you're in dis-ease in one area, it messes you up in the other areas. So I'm trying to connect all these things back again. We're starting to bring it towards a close, guys. So I've talked about spirit. I've talked about um, the, the body. I want to talk about the soul for just a moment. And again, I just want to challenge you, if any of these areas that I'm talking about, if you examine your heart and your life, if you find them lacking, I pray that you would do something about it today. So our mind, our mind, our will, our emotions, stress is one of those big killers. Our emotion, our emotions are are very challenging to us and oftentimes we live by them and everybody's so sensitive these days, my goodness, right? We're driven by our emotions instead of being driven by the power of the Holy Spirit So as I looked and I did that examination of my life, I found out that I was overweight, I ate poorly, I wasn't working out, I was super stressed, and I tried to do things by willpower when I did it in in an attempt to overcome, and I often failed. And in so doing, it almost killed me in the natural, right? That's a hard pill to swallow. Like, I, I knew about all these things. I knew the right thing to do. As Americans, we know the right thing to do. But man, I didn't do anything until it came to that point of crisis. And again, I pray that you'll get off the elevator at whatever floor you find yourself on today if you feel that there's change that needs to happen. Not only did those, those issues affect me in the physical, they no doubt had a, effects on the other relationships in my life as well and, and other aspects that I still have to deal with today when you get to the, the way that your mind, your will, and your emotions work, um, maybe through DNA or through all the drugs that I did when I was young, it did damage certain aspects of my emotions. There's benefits to this at times, and there's detractions from this at times. I'll give you a funny benefit. So I'm pretty even keel all the time, like almost robotic. If you, if you hang around me a lot, I have, I have some issues when it comes to the area of feelings, and that disappoints others around me. Like I, I'll do weird stuff. You know, I don't know if it was from DNA or, like I said, from all the drugs that I did when I was young, probably did some damage. Uh, but there's benefits. Like so yesterday... We're out there on the river, right? We're all hanging out on the boat. We're having a good time. Everybody's in the water. They're chilling out. I'm sitting on the boat watching everybody. A snake comes up and starts swimming through the water. Boy, people are freaking out. Uh, Tyler's there grabbing one kid, throwing him up over this way to the boat. Uh, My granddaughter's running up having a literal anxiety attack. Dad, Papa, help me. I'm like, I don't know, man. What's going on? Y'all just just get out. Everything's going to be good. You get up, chill. It's all going to be fine. Dude, drunk dude in the boat next to it, literally grabbed the snake throws the snake, almost hits his buddy and like goes in the boat next to it. He misses it, falls off the side and swim back over there. So bodies are scattering everywhere. And I'm like, Hey man, everything's cool. We're just, we're just chilling, chilling right there. Everything was fine. So in circumstances like that, it's good. But in many other areas of life, I certainly need to work on that particular area of my life, right? Lord, help me to do the things that I cannot do for myself. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, help me. I got off my notes. <laughs> but having our mind, our will, and our emotions run unchecked can be a serious problem in our lives. And, you know, I can remember even when it was at the point of addiction, if you've heard my testimony a number of times, there was just nights that I would cry out and say, Lord, I don't want to do this again tomorrow. Lord, would you help me? And um, seemingly, it went on much longer than I would ever desire. It took years before that prayer was answered. But if you are struggling here today in any of the areas that I talked about, my prayer is that he would answer that prayer in your life today, that he would begin that change in you, that something I shared might rise up to that next level in your life. Maybe you heard me say something about your spiritual life, and you're like, Eric, it's, it's not right. But today's the day to do something about it. Uh, maybe you've been contemplating going to the doctor like that guy in the first service that I talked about and you go there and then they go get you the help that you needed. But if you didn't go, it could be a different outcome. I just pray you don't have to go all the way to the bottom, you know, be it with an addiction or a physical issue like I had. Don't be stubborn in here. Man, surrender your life to God. Put him truly first in your life and watch what he does in every other area of your life. I'm going to ask the band to come back up now for a moment. Would you stand with me and rise with me? Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then um, we're going to worship one more song, and I want to pray for you. 
So if you just bow your head for a moment, just get in God's presence. Let me ask you a few questions. When I talked about those spiritual things, we all acknowledge for those of us who are believers in this room that, hey, we want God to be first in our lives. But with nobody really looking around today so you can have a moment of privacy, is that you, you know, you, you say with your lips that God's first, but you realize that maybe your actions don't line up with your words or your heart's intent. If that's you, man, I would love to pray for you. There's no shame in the game. I would love to pray for you. If that's you, would you just raise up your hand real high so I could see it? I see hands just all over this place. Thank you, Lord, for all the hands that are raised. Thank you. The first step is being honest with yourself, you know? So let's talk about body for just a moment. You know, some of you, you could have chronic illness that is not of your choice or your choosing in any way, shape, or form. And if that's you, I want to pray that God would heal you and deliver you and just set you free in the area of your body physically. But I also know and understand that maybe there's a lot of us that uh, we know the right thing to do in the area of nutrition. We know the right thing to do in the area of exercise. We know the right thing to do, but we, we just haven't been able to do it with consistency. And, and you feel that maybe if you don't, it's going to have some negative ramifications. Um, I'd love to pray for you if you're struggling in the area of your body, especially if it's affecting your mind, your will, your emotions, or your identity. If that's you, again, no shame. Would you raise your hand? I already see hands going up all over the room. Thank you, Lord. How about your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions? If you take an honest assessment of where you're at in life right now, would you say that you're led by the Spirit or would you say that you're led by your feelings? Are your feelings affecting your relationships? Are your feelings maybe of anxiety even affecting your physical body? Do you walk around in fear like Pastor Adam preached about last week? Do you walk around with anxiety? Do you walk around with jealousy? Are those things seeming to rule your life and you don't want it to be that way anymore? You want them to go into proper order. If that's you, would you do me a favor and just raise your hand if your emotions are run wild? I see hands again all over the place. Thank you, Lord. If you want to change, sometimes it starts with a couple of steps. You got to do something a little bit different to shake it up for a moment. And I know we said we weren't going to do anything to embarrass you, and I still won't. I promise you, there's nothing I'm going to do to embarrass you in any way. But I would like to pray for you. If you raise your hand to any of those things, I want to encourage you to have the courage to step out of your aisle for a moment and come up here, up to the front. We'd love to pray for you. Would you do that right now? If you raise your hand to any of those three things, begin to make your way up right now. Man, in first service, the altars were absolutely flooded. If that's you, come on out of your seats now. Don't be embarrassed. If you're struggling in your mind, your will, your emotions, your physical body, your spiritual relationship with God, man, we'd love to pray for you. Keep coming. You're welcome to keep coming. Make room. If you're stopped at the center of an aisle, please move forward so they can keep coming. Hey, if you're back there and the devil's trying to keep you at your seat, I just want to encourage you, maybe as we begin to worship, we're going to sing one more song of worship together. Just pour out your heart to God. Pour out your issues to God. Ask him to do for you what you can't do for yourself. And as we close out the song, I'd be honored to pray for you. Let's worship our God and King.
Lord. Your word says that you came to set the captives free. And Father, I just believe right now that chains are being broken in this place. That Lord, through our praise and through your promises, people are gonna be healed in this place today. Lord, as we contemplate the things that we've heard, would you let them sink in where conviction is necessary? Would you bring that conviction, but not unto condemnation, Lord? Let it lead to repentance or let it lead to great joy as we overcome these things. Father, I start in the area of the body and um, Lord, I pray for those who are struggling with their weight, Lord Jesus. I pray for those who this is a struggle. Maybe for many of you, it's been a lifelong struggle. It's been hard to control your diet. Um, It's hard to exercise. You're feeling the inflammation. You're feeling the weight of pain. You maybe are dealing with some, you know, physical discomfort and issues, and maybe you got to take medications because of it. And Lord, I pray that you help them right now and encourage them that they are first and foremost good enough in you. But Lord, if it's an area that you're asking them to change in, Lord, help them. Give them courage to do for themselves what they can't do for, uh, you know, help. I said that all wrong, but Lord, you know my heart. Give them the ability to do what they can't do for themselves. Would you intervene and help them in that area of their life, Lord Jesus, that we could get our, our nutrition right and our exercise right, that we could be healthy and whole and not in disorder in the area of our bodies. Father, for those who struggle in the area of sleep, your word says that you are the Prince of Peace. Then, Lord, I speak peace over them, that you would, Lord, give them sweet rest, that they would rest through the night, that they'd get their eight hours of sleep, that they'd wake up refreshed, they'd wake up renewed. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling under the weight of some chronic physical illness, Lord Jesus. Your word says that you are the great physician and that by your stripes we are healed. So, Father, I ask you to move right now and bring physical healing. Lord, doctors have called it and said that they can't do anything about it. But, Lord, you can do something about it. And, Father, I ask you to break through and bring a miracle healing in the lives of many who are in this room right now struggling with chronic illness, Lord God. Father, our souls are in need of you. Our mind, our wills, and our emotions are out of order. Many of us operate in fear and anxiety and jealousy, and we're run by our emotions, Lord. That is not the call that you have on our life. Lord, would we bring our mind, our will, and our emotions under submission to the Spirit? And Lord, we know that this is the area where the devil likes to attack. So devil and your demons and your minions, we bind you and cast you out far from the people of Journey Church. You have no authority, no ability to continue on in that area. We repent of the things that we've done on our own to create these challenges. Lord, we lay them at your feet. We ask you to take them from us. Lord, we don't want to live in that way anymore. Would you help us? Would you break some free of addiction in this place right now, this very day, they would walk out of here in newness of life, a new creation. Father, first for the believer, if we haven't been prioritizing you in the way that we should, Lord God, would you bring a righteous level of conviction? Lord, that we would uh, be spurned on to good works today, Lord Jesus, that our heart's desire would be to spend time with you that you would restore unto us the joy of our salvation, that we would remember the goodness of being in your presence, that it wouldn't be just Sunday so that we're not malnourished, but we would have a desire to be with you each and every day, building up that spiritual nourishment that leads to life and hope and happiness and healing, Lord God. Father, we know and we desire to be whole in spirit, soul, and body. And Lord, we know that's your purpose and your plan for our life today. So I speak that wholeness over the people of Journey Church this very morning. Bring wholeness to those who are here, Lord God. If you've never made a profession of faith, if you've never cried out and said, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. Forgive me. I am a wayward sinner. I need the help that comes only in you. Would you forgive me of my sins? Lord, from this moment forward, I will live for you and you alone. Father, I surrender all of my life, my spirit, my soul, my body unto you. Would you create in me a new heart, oh God? Would you make me a new creation? Man, if you've never prayed that prayer and just did, I want to encourage you to connect with us. They're going to have after this prayer on the screen a number that you can text or you can come up and speak to one of our prayer team members. They'd love to get some information into your hands to help you start this way of life. But Father, 
We just thank you for today. Thank you for convicting us in the areas that were not right and not in order. Thank you for encouraging us in the areas that we needed encouragement. Father, would we leave this place today to go live our lives to make a difference in the lives of others in Jesus' name. And everybody said, God bless you guys. Give God a little bit of glory today. Hey, before you leave, if you need prayer, come on up to the front. We'd love to pray for you. If you're new to Journey Church, and we've not met, come on up and say hello. I'd love to meet you. Go live your lives to make a difference in the lives of others. Have a great weekend.